Okay, I think we've got this sorted now. Um, hello, I am Jason Reitz. I am a, a librarian here at the North Carolina State University uh, Libraries. And today we will be making a Twitch chatbot. Hello, everyone. There we go, great. I'm going to save that for later because I think we may need it. So I believe everyone here has seen a chat bot of some sort in, uh, in Twitch. And so all, oh great. Oh gosh. Am I blending with, with Jillian? I did not change the title. Sorry for this. We had a little bit of uh, technical difficulties with our stream title. OK, great. Thank you. Um, great, we have a good title now. I think we might be able to start. All right. So today we'll be making a Twitch chatbot, and uh, we are going to be building it with JavaScript. So let's just start out. Um, believe. Gosh. I don't know why this is even showing my, my, yes, I am. <laughs> Thanks. Sorry for this confusion starting out. I am the, uh, in the S for NC States logo. Great. So let's, uh, let's take a look at, um, the documentation. So that's where we start with all, all these things like creating chatbots. So in our first step is going to be creating account uh, for the chatbot. And it's, it's a good idea to use a separate account from the one that you usually use just to watch Twitch. Um, because that way when your chatbot responds to things in chat, um, it's not going to be, um, it's not going to be your name responding. It'll be a chatbot uh, labeled name. So that that way we can see um, that way we can see uh, that it's a chatbot. Sorry. So let's see. Uh, if I put something in chat now, I'm already signed in as my chatbot. So let's see. I'll put something in. And you'll see that Tuffy the library bot has said something. Now, uh, your first step is going to be going to log in with Twitch. And because I already have an account uh, with uh, Tuffy the library bot, it's going to ask me to, to authorize this connection. Um, let me do this in a, another window real quick, just in case it flashes anything you shouldn't see. Um, one thing that we have to be careful with in this stream is that I don't show you any keys or uh, uh, pass codes. So I'm going to be trying to be very careful with that. Uh, let's see. Um, after we've created our uh, Twitch account, and that's I'm, I'm not going to do that uh, on stream. But basically, what you need to do is set up a new uh, account on Twitch. Um, the dev.twitch.tv is the site that you'll want to eventually connect to your Twitch account for your your uh, chatbot. So once we've gotten all that out of the way, um, you'll see something like this. Okay, so. We have any, I know this was kind of a rough start, but let's let's see how we can do. Are there any questions so far? 
and I'll wait just a minute because there's a lag. Okay. So no questions yet. Let's uh, continue on. Um, we are going to be going through uh, the uh, chat and chatbots um, guide. And I have, I'm not going to be using it, but if you do want to, they have a fully functioning chatbot on Glitch, uh, which is another, uh, which is a website that allows you to sort of spin up a very temporary uh, server and run programs on it. And so they've got a whole thing here. If you click on the glitch part here in the docs, uh, it'll it'll bring up a system and you just have to enter in your, your account details. But I think we're okay to uh, use, I, I would like to use JavaScript today and do it on my local machine. So I'm gonna be running my chatbot from my local machine. So it's only gonna be running when I tell it to run basically. Um, let's see. So these are the things that we're going to need. Bot username, channel name, OAuth token, right? And let me go ahead and open up ES code. There we go. Uh, let me close all this stuff for you. And we're going to just, I've got a directory here. This is a command line. I'm going to make a new directory for us to work in. So let's. Call it Tuffybot. So mkdir is the make directory command for uh, Unix light machines, Linux light machines. Uh, I'm on a Macintosh, which comes with uh, the ability to to use those kinds of commands. So I can change my directory cd into Tuffybot and. There we are. So if I look in Tuffybot, which is the LS, kind of look around, uh, list the, I forget what the, that abbreviation stands for, but just to list the contents of this directory LS. We will be using JavaScript. Yes. Good question. So we will be using a, a type of JavaScript called, um, that runs on Node. Uh, Node is a JavaScript engine that allows you to use JavaScript as a scripting language, uh, or as a, as a server-side scripting language. That's a lot of terms <laughs> for someone who's not aware. Uh, when you uh, navigate to a web page, there is a server somewhere, a computer running a server application that will serve up that web page to you, okay? Now, there are different kinds of servers. There's Apache, there's Nginx, there's all kinds of different servers that you can use to serve those pages. Um, the one that we'll be using today is, is Node. Node allows us to use a, the JavaScript language to write all of our uh, server type things, server uh, process uh, code. Does that make sense? Hopefully it does. So, yes, great. Someone's put up a link for Node.js. And so that's good to, to see how to use Node. Um, let's see. I think what we can do, good answer. So I guess that's right. Uh, let me see. So um, oh, that is not the right command. Let me uh, 
that's right. So <clears throat> I put in the wrong command here. It's not node init that we need to do to start a node project. Um, it is npm init. So npm is a node package manager. So node, the server application, has a bunch of different packages and libraries that you can use um, to run your application, right? So maybe you use different libraries to make things easier in your code. Well, to handle all those different dependencies, so all those different packages that we need to you that we need to rely on for our, our server, uh, we have a package manager, and that's what npm does. And so if I do npm init, that says, hey, I want to start a new node um, project. And so if we look in here. So we're going to create a package.json file. Great. And if we need help, we could type npm help init. Now this is assuming you already have Node and npm installed. And if you want to do that, I think it's uh, on Mac, the easiest way would be brew install npm. Um, for Windows, I don't know. You'd have to go see that link that uh, our mods helpfully put in there, nodejs.org. Um, and that those will give you the links for uh, how to install Node on, on these other things. And, and NPM comes with Node, usually. So we're going to call our uh, package name uh, TuffyBot. I don't have to enter it in since it's got it in the curly or the parentheses, but I'm going to anyway. All right, next, we have a version. Um, this is not ready for prime. prime prime time yet. So I'm going to make it 0, 0, 001. Uh, usually version numbers, anything with that starts with a number greater than zero means it's ready for production. Oh, great. They had a note, uh, Mac packaged Mac uh, download. Now, the thing is with uh, some things, you can use the Mac uh, package downloaders for some projects like Node. Um, I have found that for some things, it's easier to use something like Brew, um, which I can show you. Oh, I forget their actual link here. So this is sort of a third party package manager for Mac OS. And um, it can be very helpful for uh, installing packages in a, in a consistent way. So you don't have to go to all these different websites to find, you know, and hope that they have a uh, Mac version posted on the website. You can just use brew and, and find the package that you want there. So um, node would be um, in this as well. Um, you can use the package manager that, uh, that or the package packaged app that Node.js is, is posted on their website. Um, but I think most likely it's just as easy to use um, uh, the brew command. So you would just do brew install node, done. Um, either way is good. Sometimes the versions will be different. And so depending on your project, you may need to do a little digging to make sure that you have the right version of that, uh, of that, of that package. Anyway, let's get back to it. So we've got a version number, description. We could write a description in here. Don't really need to. Um, Index.js seems like a, a fine entry point. That means what file will Node run to start out with? Um, and we're going to go with index.js. I think that's a good, good basic uh, file name. Um, I'm not going to worry about tests today. Uh, you could uh, run in a, a test command if you want. So I'm just going to hit enter on some of these. I don't have a Git repository yet, so I'm just going to hit enter. Keywords, don't care about that. I could put in my name, uh, don't care. Um, I'll put an MIT on this um, and a MIT license, and I think that's good to go. So yes is in parentheses. I could just hit enter, or I can type yes. OK, so what have we done? We have made a directory, TuffyBot. 
we've npm init, which is started a package uh, manager file, and we've entered in some information to fill in. And so if we do a little ls here, we can see one file in our directory, package.json. Let's take a look at it. I'm going to restart this uh, application with that as the main folder. Um, I think that'd be a good idea. So I'm going to do code dot. VS Code is the application I'm using to write this in. And uh, code dot just says open a window in this directory. Go. We don't need the get started link. All right, Tuffy Bot, package JSON. Or some people just say Jason, but my name is Jason, and so for some reason I've always said JSON. <laughs> I don't like saying package JSON. It just seems weird to me, but I, I think many people do. Uh, do you refer to it as uh, JSON instead of JSON, but whatever. We've got, there's our version, our description, our main is main file is index.json or index.js, right? I, I'm not narcissistic enough to, to refer to myself every time I talk about a, a JSON file. Okay, and that's it. That's it for now. That's all we have. Now I'm going to open up a terminal so I can uh, get to uh, creating some other things and adding some things here. So I'm going to just say a new terminal. New terminal. Uh, this is you know terminal command line uh, uh, command prompt. That's what we're we're getting at here. And if you need help with some of these uh, basic uh, commands and things. I have another Twitch stream that you'll have to look into the NCSU libraries for on just the coders toolbox. And so it explains a lot of these basic uh, kind of commands like copying things and how to how to read uh, man pages and things like that. So let's see. Um, what are we going to be doing first? Well, I know that I have a couple of things that I want to add to this package JSON. I want to add um, I want to add a TMI uh, JS, which is a um, it's a library. Excuse me, that there's a library that is used to contact Twitch. Before I enter this, I'll show you, I'll show you how I got there. Uh, let's see. There we go. npm install tmi.js. Um, and if you want to see that, there we go. JavaScript package for Twitch chat. And there's some instructions here as well um, to get you going with that. So let's. Go ahead back to our. Yes, that is the dead stream. Thank you, uh, mod. Our mod is great today. Thank you. So add TMI JS. What does the I do? Uh, I don't. I don't know. Let's let me sidetrack a little bit. NPM, man NPM, that'll tell us the man page for NPM. Well, theoretically it would. There we go. And I'm going to just go through this real quick. Uh, 
go. Wow, that is not a very helpful man page. Um, I guess you should do npm help if you're curious about the dash i, and then scroll up and look at that. Ah, i is install. Okay, that makes sense. It's not a dash i, it's just i. So npm install mi.js. No, I'm not using Java. Uh, I'm just using, uh, uh, we'll be using JavaScript today. Uh, the difference between Java and JavaScript is great. And it is quite confusing and has been for decades that <laughs> JavaScript is, uh, shares part of its name with Java. So, uh, yeah, so actually it's JavaScript that we'll be using, which is a good bit different than Java. Java is a, uh, well, um, I'm sure there's, there's a, uh, a differentiating guide on uh, Google or something that we can find, but basically JavaScript is a, uh, a lot easier and a lower bar to use than using Java. With Java, you write your code and then you have to compile it and then ship it out and like, make a package out of it before you can even run it. With JavaScript, you can open up any web browser, open up the console and start using JavaScript right there. Um, with Java, you have to have like a whole build process. So that's one reason why JavaScript is so popular and why Node, in fact, is um, so popular as a server because you don't have to use some of those uh, uh, harder to understand programming languages to run a server. You can just use JavaScript. Um, so anyway, let's, let's npm i tmi. Hopefully this won't take terribly long. I'm on a pretty good connection. All right. So let's see. Uh, there's some deprecations. Those are just warnings, so I'm not going to worry about those. 28 vulnerabilities, geez. Um, no, I haven't done this uh, for this package yet, but you could run npm audit. Um, I'm not going to be using this, this uh, project uh, for sort of customer facing or public facing use. So I'm not gonna worry about the, the vulnerabilities in this uh, TMI yet. Uh, but if you were using this for a production, um, then I would recommend digging into some of these vulnerabilities. NPM space audit uh, would give you uh, some of those details and then NPM audit fix would allow you to fix them, hopefully. Um, but we are going to Let's ignore the warnings for now. <laughs> we must push ahead. We must be bold. All right. So uh, we've got NPM uh, TMI in there. If you notice in our package JSON, we now have a dependency of TMI. Great. It's saying use higher than 2.0 version, version 2.0. That's what this caret means. It just means uh, 2.0 or better. Uh, so great. What else do we need? Uh, I want to use a thing called dot env. And that's going to allow us to use a uh, environment file to handle our credentials. So I don't have to show you guys. So npm i dot env, e -N -V, and I can pop that into the um, chat. There you go. That's the uh, the dot env package in npm js is the package managing website for all that stuff. Looks like there's some additional vulnerabilities and things for them. Great. 
but now we have .env and TMI. So I think we're good to go. And if you look over here on the left, you'll see under node modules, it's downloaded a ton of packages. Look at this. We've added two dependencies to our project, and I don't even know how many folders it's added to our, our, our project. We haven't even written a line of code, and we have, we have a pretty large uh, node module package, uh, set of packages. Great. Yes, this is all fine. There is a meow package. Oh my gosh. Do we need to, do we need to take a look at the meow package? What does the meow package do? Somebody mentioned in chat, they saw a meow package. Oh my God. There is a meow package. What does this guy do? Parses, it's a CLI app helper, parses arguments using minimist. Converts things to camel case. Why is it called meow? Okay, well that's fun, isn't it? So one thing I really like about uh, uh, using Node <laughs> and, uh, and NPM is when it, you get these Node packages, uh, Node modules folder, you can actually look in to the source code that you're using and you can evaluate it. So like the TMI package that we installed, I'm sure it's in here somewhere. If I want to look at the source code for TMI, I can just click on it. I can see a readme. I can see their own package.json file. I can see their license. I can see the index.js that they use. Um, it's really great if you're learning a programming language and you're just curious about things. Uh, I recommend uh, digging around in some of these and just learning how um, some of these packages are built. It's all right there. It's free. Go check it out, right? Um, but for now, let's move on. So we need to index.js uh, file, index file. So let's make a new file. Uh, we're going to call ours index.js, and that's a common uh, name for these things. And I am just going to see if this thing's working. So I'm writing JavaScript. This is a JavaScript file. It ends in .js. I've saved it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run, uh, I believe it is node dot. Now, I believe you could also run node dot, or node index.js. But because we said in our package file that index.js was our entry point, node dot just says, hey, run node that's in this directory, right? Let's see what happens. Node dot, hey, is this thing on? We got it. Fantastic. We have a thing. Now, um, console.log. I'm not going to go into every detail on every command, but you can see as I hover over some of these things, uh, I've got some some hints in this in VS Code here that will pop up. It tells me what some of these objects and uh, classes do. So console, uh, some debugging console abilities, log prints it to standard out, and message is not actually something I typed. It's something the IDE has told us. That's what this thing is. This string, this string of characters surrounded by single quote marks, um, is a message. All right. So what have we done? We've we've done a npm init. We've added a couple of packages that we're going to use, and we've uh, confirmed that this thing does work. Console.log. Great. We're going to go ahead and move on now. So uh, in JavaScript, uh, there's a thing called uh, we have to include those. Um, we're going to get we're going to include uh, a handle or a short uh, a variable that's going to hold um, 
the uh, the library class of TMI. Does that make sense? Oh, I don't feel like I explained that well. Let's see. Um, so I'm going to do const TMI. Const means this is going to be a constant. So you could say var uh, newer JavaScript uh, uh, convention is to use const uh, for things that aren't going to change. So const and equals. And we are just going to say require tmi.js. Um, and that just says I want to make sure that tmi uh, is loaded before I continue on this uh, executing this code. This JSON, uh, this JavaScript file, and we're going to make another one. It's going to be const client. So we need to make up some kind of uh, handle for um, for the the client we're going to be using to talk to Twitch, right? And we're going to say that it is a new TMI dot. And look at this. VS Code has actually given us some uh, hints here about what TMI uh, sort of objects and functions and things and types there are available. And we know that we want to use our TMI library, and we want to use a, a, the client class. So type in client, and now we're going to have some options. So we've got ops, TMI options. There's going to be some different things we're going to put in here. Let's see. Uh, let's go ahead and put it in. This is one that's just going to be a debug. We're going to tell it to do true. Oops. Now, don't worry about um, the way I'm coming up with these. I've, I've gone through the the reference documents ahead of time. And so I've seen you know, how to set up TMI and all these things. So uh, TMI, there's a getting started guide. And there's some basic ways to, to set up a basic client to connect to the IRC chat, uh, Twitch chat. So I'm really kind of going through some of this stuff. And um, so that's why I wasn't, uh, that's where I'm getting some of this info from, right? So options, we're going to do identity. Let's see. We got username. It's going to need that. Uh, let's see, we're going to put password. And then, yeah, username and password. And then after that, we're going to want uh, the channels that we're going to be listening to. We're just going to do one. Um, and that is going to be this channel, right? So is the name of this channel. It's NCSU Libraries. And now we got to get our username and password. Now, this is fun. Um, I'm going to do a new file. Let me call it .env. Okay. And what we need uh, from our chat and chat bot thing here. We've got three things that we need, right? We need a username, channel name, and OAuth token. Uh, okay, so bot username. Ah, caps lock. Make sure I'm up with that. Please stop me if you guys have any questions about what's going on. I'm going to do a bot username, 
We've got an OAuth token. And we have a channel name. And the channel name we already know is going to be NCSU libraries. Right. Now I'm going to uh, fill this out off screen here and um, get back in. But basically my, let's see, my uh, bot name is Tuffy the Library Bot. Yes, the uh, question from the mod would be, uh, is this, uh, these can be stored variables. Yes, they are. So these are, these are environment variables and putting them in a separate file allows us to, maybe we wanna commit the whole project to GitHub, right? Well, we don't wanna share our passwords in GitHub with everybody who, who sees our, our project. So we can put it in a .env file that we can uh, not put send to GitHub and that'll keep our passwords separate from our code, which is a good practice. Um, it also means that once I get this entered in here, um, I can just I can just show you uh, we can just work on the code here, and you won't see my actual username, password, and, and channels here. Right, and let's see token. Now for the OAuth part, we need to get uh, an OAuth token. So um, what you'll want to do is, let's see, they have a way to do that. Right here, there's a link to twitchapps.com TMI. Um, let me open that up in another browser because I don't want it to flash uh, I don't want it to flash my code accidentally, right? Right. So this is what you'll get when you go to twitchapps.com slash TMI. You'll hit connect. And that should give you an OAuth token. I'm going to do that again off screen. Actually, before it does that, it gives you it gives you a OAuth token generator. So here it's got my name for the bot because I'm already logged in. My bot it lets, it tells me the things I'm gonna this token will allow me to do. And if I hit authorize, then I think it gets me the OAuth token. It did great. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. And in this ENV, give me one second, I can pull this over to another window. I'm just going to put that OAuth token. It begins with OAuth colon and then a bunch of encrypted characters, right? Uh, a hash. I'm going to save that and close it. And I believe that means that you guys won't see it anymore. Let me double check. Right. So I'm not going to click on .env, but all my uh, passwords and things are in there now. And so now in my index.json, index.js, I can do process, uh, hmm, env, dot, and I sh should be able to do those, uh, those key names that we put in the .env file which are username, And 
And if we want to, we could even do that for the NCSU libraries as well. Instead of entering it in here. Great. Um, we can go ahead and save that. And I think what I want to do is make sure that uh, this works, right? So we need to make sure that these things are coming through. Um, let's go ahead and after this, let's do a console log. And I just want to find out if uh, uh, client identity username shows up. So let's see. Uh oh, we got some modules not found. Uh, let's see, I believe did not find module tmi.js. Hmm. Got that. Why did we not get TMI.js? One second. Hmm. I'll try something. Uh, when I did this earlier, I was using an older version of TMI. And I wonder if that's why we get an errors because maybe the newer one doesn't work correctly. So I'm going to do this and I'm going to try to uh, um, We got some errors. Hmm. Well, this is what happens. We when we have errors is when we learn things, right? So uh, it looks like. I messed up our little dependency thing. And when we change something in the package.json file, we have to, the node packages is where it's looking for these things. And because it was using a newer version there, hopefully by removing the node packages and telling it to download everything again, um, it will. Uh, oh gosh. NPM install is correct. I guess that 185 is not is no longer good. Ooh. What is going on? Require TMIJS. I mean that's what we're doing, isn't it? Let's see. Let's see if we can figure this one out. We'll try reinstalling the TMI. We love troubleshooting, don't we? Don't we? I think we learn a lot when we troubleshoot because, you know, 
nothing nothing gives you a better understanding of kind of wrestling with these difficulties uh, uh, instead of just following a script and just saying, put this command, this command, this command, everything works great. Uh, I think we get a better understanding maybe uh, when, we, when we have errors like this. So let's try it again. Um, what do we have? We have, all right, we have everything installed. Now I'm gonna, heck, I'm just gonna, um, we'll try it real quick. Okay, what is it not finding? Let's look at this error message in detail. CJS loader, internal module CJS loader, throw error, okay. Cannot find module tmi.js. Let me see what version of Node we have. It's a very new version of Node. Hmm. Do am I? Do we need to just follow this thing? Am I required? Is this thing still on? I mean, this. My sound is not working now. Oh no! Hello, hello. I think you can. Okay. Hopefully you can hear me now. Oh my gosh, sorry. If the uh, sound goes out again, I'll just have to uh, fix my uh, headset. It's a uh, Bluetooth and yeah, these things happen. Um, where were we? Uh, we've got a newer version of Node. I was gonna look and see what's different between our index.json file and their JS file and, and theirs. Uh, let's see, const TMI. I mean, there's a space there, that, that, that shouldn't matter. Uh, require TMI JS. Oh, you were at, uh, the mod is wondering how I typed in the chat. Uh, I'm signed into Twitch under my mod, uh, uh, under my, uh, my bot's username. So if I type into chat, uh, it shows up as Tuppy the Library Bot. So, what is going on? Why won't it require? So, require. Let's see. I mean, I'm thinking it's because we use the require uh, uh, command, and that's a newer JavaScript thing. But that shouldn't be ma that shouldn't matter if we're using the newest version of Node. Um, hmm. 
Well, you know, when in doubt, let's Google whack it. Find our, this, I mean, this is real programming because this is what we do, right? We go to Google or DuckDuckGo or wherever, and we're going to type in some stuff. Let's see, can't find module. What's going to happen here? So we can install things globally or locally. Mm. Yeah, that's the same thing I tried earlier was just removing node modules and rerunning npm install. Hmm. Oh, dash dash save. That's interesting. Maybe that's what we need to do. Let me try uh, the first thing. Uh, let's delete the node modules. Let's download them again. Let's make sure our package JSON. So, package JSON. Okay, whatever. Um, package JSON is is the sh is the human readable sort of uh, instructions for Node. In npm, um, the package dot dash lock locks in the specific versions of things that it install. It wants to try and install next time. So here it's saying use node module AJV version six twelve, and you know all its dependencies and their versions and so on and so on. I mean it's a long document, right? So um, let's try. Um, just, you know, npm install once more. And if that doesn't work, what we're going to do is uh, try that dash dash save thing. All right. I don't think the audits, the, the error warnings and audit are a problem. Those are vulnerabilities, not uh, breaking things. Uh, so let's try. Um, we did npm install, so let's try uh, node index.js. Module not found. Okay, so let's try the npm. Let's see, install dash dash save. Oops. I don't know why you would need to do that. That seems very strange to me, but who knows? Oh, it did add something there. Look at that. Did we? Hmm. I'm going to go back to our commands here. I'm hitting the up arrow like, lets us look at previous commands. We did npm install tmi. It was npm install tmi.js. tmi is not the same problem, uh, the same package. Oh my gosh. Okay, oops, shoot. Well, oh shoot. I think we'll have to, I'll have to get a new OAuth, OAuth token because I, I let that slip. So, let's see. Yep, and we're gonna remove the TMI part of it. And while it's doing that, I am going to get a new um, TMI uh, JS token. 
Let's see. Where was that? One second, and we will get this, this uh, train back on the tracks. Okay. Don't open that file anymore. Great. I think we are good to go, hopefully. Knock on all the wood. Um, I'm gonna save that, save that. Let's see what happens now. We got another one. What do we got? Okay, great. This is great. So the this is a good error. So this means that our console log client identity username did not come back with a uh, It's undefined. And that is because we did not include the library for uh, the, the .env project. So that is something I meant to do, I, uh, I did on purpose. That was an error I did on purpose. So const, um, actually we don't need a const because we're just requiring it. So require .env config, and that is from the .env uh, uh, documentation. So now I can use that process and try it again. Oh my gosh, really? Well, in theory it should have. What's going on? Isn't this fun? Hmm. Let's see. We've got okay. That's saved. I can click on it. And we pointed this at client identity username. Oh my gosh. Hopefully you can still hear me. Um, can I get a confirmation from a mod that you guys can still hear me? Great, thank you. Whew. Man, we're just having all kinds of issues here today. Uh, let's see, noted. Great. Okay. Lots of log, username. Hmm. Why would that not work?
Well, I guess in the interest of moving on, I'm going to go ahead and uh, temporarily put in our OAuth token here, and I will just obscure it by folding it. Um, for whatever reason, this .env thing is just not working, is it? So um, I'm just going to do that real quick so we can actually move on and get something done. So sometimes these development things can uh, take a little while to... Uh, sort out these unexpected uh, detours. So it'll be okay. Let me uh, just do that off screen real quick. One second. And our username is Type through the library bot. Okay, I think we can actually move forward now. I have just folded that little area away. So hopefully we can run. Oh my gosh, what's wrong now? Maybe you can't refer to it that way. Maybe that's the whole problem. Ugh. All right. I'm going to move on. <laughs> I think you just can't refer to that username in that way. And I think that's where I'm getting uh, a little uh, tied up. Yeah. Okay. Well... I think if we move on, it's going to be okay. Maybe that uh, dot .env thing was working after all. Um, I guess we could have... We could have... Because uh, now I'm really just... I want to know. Uh, dot .username. Undefined. Yeah, I guess it. Oh wait, it was uh, bot. What was it? Bot username. Bot username. I gotta know, guys. Okay. Tough with the library bot. It works. Oh my gosh. So, I was right all along. That's, that's the takeaway. I'm pretty sure that's the takeaway, right? I'm going to go ahead and fix that back to the way it was. And I bet we can move on from there. Okay, so dot env works, yay! Okay, now we can actually make the bot that we came here to do, right? Oh my gosh. <sighs> All right, next. We want to connect. So, client. On. Oh, we gotta connect first. And then client. I'm gonna hurry through some of this so we can get to things. So anytime there's a message, I want to grab the channel tags. 
message and self. And that I'm going to do a little uh, anonymous function here. Uh, error function, I'm sorry, error function. And let's just do um, I'm going to copy this real quick. Save us some time. Okay, so right now we have, we're connecting to Twitch chat. When there's a message, we're going to grab this information from that message. Okay, so we're going to grab the channel. Tags is kind of like a, a, a bucket of things that Twitch sends us. Uh, the actual message is going to be the text, the string uh, of the message. And self is who we are. Okay, um, so that this little first is called a guard statement this first statement and it just says uh you know if if this message that we hear is from us or that this is an or thing or if it's not a message that starts with an, an exclamation mark then we're going to do nothing we're just going to return end of story so that's what we call a guard statement um it's like guarding the rest of our function from running in, in case we actually want to run it, right? So we don't want to run this this bot if the bot was the one that sent the message. We could get a loop that way, right? And uh, what this is just going to do is, in my application, it's just going to print out from the tags, there'll be a display name and the message. So that's all we're going to do. So let me go ahead and turn this, this guy on. Oh no, we got an improperly formatted off. Oof. Oh gosh, what have we done now? Did we close everything? I don't think that matters, but we'll double check. Mm -mm. Okay, well we guys we're gonna have to ask Twitch about this one. This is, this is not going to be it. Let's see. Let's see what Twitch devs have to say about it. Hmm. I'm going to double check that OAuth token again. Ugh. Okay, I think I fixed it. I didn't have an underscore there. Hey, hey, we're in. So, if someone other than me could put a message into chat, any message, and start it with an exclamation mark, like a command, like this. <laughs> I 
Okay, great. Now I'll stop that before we get wonderful. So you can see that uh, it's actually so it it printed that even though it started with uh, an exclamation mark. That's interesting. I'll have to check that out. Hmm. Okay, let's stop it for now, and then uh, let's continue on, and we'll see if we can fix that in the next section. And I am just going to hide that part for now. So these little slash marks means this has become a, a commented this section of the code out and so it's not going to run and now I'm going to add in a couple of new things so I'm going to make a new thing called args and I'm going to take the message that we get I'm going to slice it up I'm going to split it based on the spaces and then I'm going to take those those args so the things that make up the message and I'm going to make them lowercase that's all that's doing. So to see what that looks like, I'll do a console log, and we're going to do a uh, console log. Uh, let's do args. And I think I can do a comma here, and we could do tags as well, because I'm kind of curious what that what's in that tags object as well, right? So. Let's take a look. All right, so this thing's on. I'm going to type into a chat. Uh, let's type in something like um, okay. So now we got a bunch of stuff that just came in, right? Let's take a look. So the message that was typed in was exclamation mark one of those days. Our little code split that one of those days, took out the exclamation mark and it split it up into three strings in an array. Or if you're a Python person, that might be a list to you, right? Um, this is the object everything after this curly brace that comes with tags. So about the person who sent that message, we've got all kinds of things. We've got a display name. We've got whether or not it's the first message. They have emotes. We've got if they're a mod or not. We've got the room ID. Uh, if they're a subscriber. Um, all these things. We've got their user ID number uh, and that it's a chatbot and who said it. So if someone else could put an exclamation mark and any command, we'll take a look at your uh, see what tags it sends back. Yes, with an emote. I love it. Okay, so what do we got? Yes, PogChamp. And so PogChamp, PogChamp. Oh, that's cool. And so let's see, we have a moderator. They have a badge. That's their display name. The emote that they used. Isn't that interesting? Okay. Um, Great, user type, emails raw, wild stuff. Okay, so that's all the info that we get from these things. I'm gonna hit Control C to, to end our, our log here. Great, now we can move on to actual helpful things. So let's see, uh, let's say, let's come up with a command. Uh, I'm gonna do, let's see, comment this out. 
keep those guys and I am going to bring in a switch statement so switch and we're going to say whatever the command is now we're going to have some things that it can it can do so default um, if we don't know the command what are we going to say uh, let's see client dot say channel that's the channel we're in and we're going to say at we're going to grab whoever said its name so tags username and uh, let's see let's say I don't I'm sorry Hal or I'm sorry I don't know that command. And great. And we'll do a little console log of like what what was sent. Just so for our own info. So that's our first step. So now we have our uh, little chatbot here is listening on the channel to any message. If it's got a uh, exclamation mark, it should be continuing on and uh, figuring out what the command is. So the first thing, uh, the first or the command, and if the command is any command, it's going to say this. So let's see if it works. All right, and I just turned it on, so I'm going to put in, oh, there we go. Let's see, hello world. Okay, so that's great. We see that the mod entered in a a message but it didn't it wasn't a command so then is this on and it responds I'm sorry I don't know that command and it put their name their username and that's weird it, I feel like it responded before in the chat before you even it posted your message, which is strange. Right. Oh, weird. Okay, uh, I'm gonna turn it on. Turn it off, I mean. And let's try, uh, let's come up with a command together. Um, Let's see, what command could we do? Case, and then we'll put it in there. And we'll say, I'm just gonna grab that as a, an example. That. And okay, so what would we like to say? How about, I'm not sure, how about the uh, opening message of what we're doing here? So let's be welcome to NCSU Library Stream. How about that? So I'm going to put, copy that and I'm going to put that into there. I don't know how to do links. So I'll have to look that up sometime. Uh, I imagine it is something like, maybe it's Reddit style, is that it? I 
I always get the con it confused if it's the parentheses first or the uh, brackets, but uh, called ask us. So. Let's see. I'm going to turn this guy on. And I'm going to put in the command ask us. Oh. Well, it looks like we have a Nightbot already in the chat room. And it has a ask us command. And it also looks like in our, uh, in our, uh, our message, it tried to send it and said, I don't know that command, which that doesn't make sense. Why would it say that? Ask us. Is that not? What I put? Ask us? Hmm. Wow. The pots are fighting. Okay, so, well, I don't know. Maybe, maybe we change the uh, command. Uh, let's call it a... Uh, Welcome. I guess maybe I should make double check and make sure. Maybe I do need to add the Tuffy Bot. Is there a welcome message? Okay, good. Well, it shouldn't be reading its own messages, but when I send a message personally in chat, it should it should read that. Which is a good question. Um, so let's let's find out. So turning it on, and I'm going to put in welcome. I'm sending messages too quickly. I think that might be a setting in. Um, that actually might be something for our mod to fix. <laughs> I think that's a setting in our Twitch settings for this account that would be that would block. Um, hmm. Oh gosh. We're sending this just too quick. Interesting. Okay. Well, uh, can I get the mod to just try the exclamation welcome that I sent? And, oops, not yet. How about now? Okay, great. It is, it is. It's because I was sending the message, Tuffy the Library Bot, and I would, the Tuffy the Library Bot was responding so quick. But it was like, you can't send messages that quick. That's too much. So we've got that sorted out. Great. I don't know why. And then the, it, it blocked out the link, which is weird. Hmm. Let me see. When Nightbot put the link in, it just put the link in. It, okay, there was nothing strange in, like, special in the link. So I wonder, um, <laughs> yeah, Tuffy's, Tuffy's fast. Okay, um, well, I think we've got sort of the basic thing. Maybe we can do a couple others. Uh, hmm. What could? What else could we look up? Um, 
Hmm. Trying to think. Maybe I've got an API or something we could query. That would be fun. Hmm. How about we hook it up to like a a random API something? I was going to try a uh, pet finder, but I think you have to do a whole OAuth thing. I think that might be too much. Let's see. What about this J service requiring on? Let's try that. Okay. Plugging a social media or something every now and then. Hmm, that's a good question. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess we could. Uh, we could do. We could put a timer on. Uh, we could do a timer here. Let's see. After we've connected, and every so often post a message. The, the question is whether or not, since we are not NCSU Library's account, we're a bot account, if it'll let us post the same thing multiple times. I don't know. Um, but let's uh, let's figure out how to do that. So let's do a JavaScript timeout. What's the timeout thing? Uh, There we go. So MDM uh, Mozilla Developer Network is where I go for all of my uh, my uh, needs as far as uh, JavaScript, HTML uh, code uh, instructions. So if we look at uh, set interval, right? Um, it looks like the easiest way maybe is to do something like this. Uh, let's just make it easy. looking for a very simple example with the, the timer that we could do that I won't have to get into too much uh, yeah I think we'll just do a, a very simple one uh, so we can get to work so let's see um, let's do a function uh, Send a message and I'll just do it. Okay, and for the send message, we're going to do this guy. Um, let's see. Now, where is it? Client say. Okay. And 
front say channel and then the message is going to go right here I'm going to do a te test message. And we pull chat. Make sure that let's just send that test message and see if it works. Wait, where is... I don't think that should matter, but yep, that definitely mattered. Ah, yeah, we didn't uh, include the channel, did we? So I think that we have to get that from the, the client. Um, hmm. Hmm. I think I need to go to the uh, TMI documents with that. Hmm, your documentation, not great. Unless I'm missing something. Here we go. Is that, that's literally the end of it? Oh gosh. Like they don't, they don't even tell you how to, uh, where are the, where's the API, right? Hmm. Well, what we could do, this is getting a little in the weeds, but uh, definitely something we could do. Let's take a look at TMI. Oops, too much AS. Library. Here we go. Uh, let's see, client. Oh, there's a timer. Uh, client. Okay. 
We got commands, we got logger, const client. Outline might be more helpful. Hmm. Gosh, I just don't know. I think if we did say, hmm. client say, hmm. TMI lib client say. Means fence. This utils. Yeah. These are fence commands. Hmm. we go so say it needs the channel and the message uh, channel hmm I wonder if that means that we could just use a default uh, we could try it just to say No, it's going to try and do the channel. Hmm. Well, we know the channel, so we can just type it in. Uh, ugh, I'm in the wrong place. Oh, jeez. Yeah. <sighs> I'm not quite sure what's going on here. It could be that it's not connected maybe you need an event to trigger it i'm not sure um, i'd have to dig into some documentation on that uh, to solve it uh, but i think what we could do is probably hmm yeah I'm sure there's a way, I just don't know it right now. I'd have to dig into some documentation. That's a good question, though. I um, wonder why that didn't work. Hmm. Because I, I bet if we did this and something like this. I 
good. So let's see. Oh right, it's because I'm I'm the one sending it. Um, so it did it, it printed out test message. So that does work, the send message. It's just because because send message was outside of that client on message. Um, hmm. I wonder. I wonder if there's like a client. Uh, it's probably like a client, a different on or something. But anyway. Um, do an echo, could do, let's see if this is, let me can see if I can get a, uh, I'm going to see if we can maybe just have a uh, type of the library bot give us a uh, uh, Jeopardy question real quick. But I need to see if I can get it to respond. Let's see. I'm going to take a quick look at. in that mode. Um, let me take a quick look at what it is doing when we send this guy. So what did it do? Oops. Hmm. Search log is on. I'm just gonna do that. Clear it. Sorry, I'm doing a bunch of things right now, but I just wanted to get a uh, a uh, API. So here we go. So it is. So if we send it to this guy. Okay, great. So that does work. Yeah, that should work. Uh, so let's see, we could do... What is that response look like? I don't know if I have enough time to finish this, but we'll, we'll try it. Uh, so the response we get is... Oh gosh, that's a lot of stuff. Um, this may not work because of cores, I'm not sure. Uh, but I, I'd like to give it a shot real quick. Uh, so we call it J service for now. This is going to be const response is equal to fetch. And 
so log response. What am I missing? may get a cores error here, but I thought I'd give it a shot. So. Oh. <laughs> Can I get the mod to type in uh, exclamation mark? J service. Please. Okay, great. Thank you. What kind of errors do we get? Fetch isn't defined. Ah. Uh, yeah, that's a that's another stream. We'll have to build on on it in another stream, I think. But um, this was fun. Uh, I'm sorry we had so many complications. I think we learned some things. If you could follow along. Um, yeah, next stream we will. Uh, Maybe we'll, next stream I do, maybe I'll, uh, you know, continue on with the chat bot, or maybe we'll just do, play with the J service and, and play with the uh, APIs. I believe there is another video on that, though, so I'll have to see if it's been done before. Um, thank you again for hanging out with us, uh, and uh, we will catch you later. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs>